Welcome back to another episode of Chasing the Wind. Thanks for joining me. Good morning on this. Uh, probably a Monday morning you're getting this. So anyway, um, let's see what the Holy Spirit is up to. Uh, so there are, as there has been pretty much in most northern uh, states, <laughs> two seasons. Winter and construction. Uh, so, you know, here in the summer in the northeast, we have construction. You're having to detour. You're having to go around things. You're having to slow down. All that good stuff. Going, slowing down to a crawl. Watching out for, you know, not getting tar and or oil, and oil and chip on your car and everything else. All sorts of fun things go along with construction. And so I was coming in this morning to uh, do these recordings. And um, I noticed that the street out in front of where we turned to come do these... Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had to jog way around and come back in another direction. And it was a huge inconvenience. That well, wasn't huge, but there's a little bit of exaggeration there. But I, I, I was inconvenienced a little bit. Today, though, coming in on that road, um, that street, it was smooth as silk. Well, not that felt that way, smooth as silk as a road can be, I guess. It was not bumpy, and it was it was nice. And the Lord uh, just kind of spoke to me and reminded me about a passage of Scripture that is out of Isaiah, two places, Isaiah, Isaiah 40 and Isaiah 45. And then it is quoted regarding John the Baptist preparing the way in Luke chapter 3. And um, it says this, a voice of one in verse uh, 4 Get my eyes working here. But the voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight and the rough ways smooth. Let's talk about these rough ways smooth because it kind of uh, spoke to me this morning. The Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning when I was coming in, live streaming with me and... Um, We've been, I've been kind of going through a rough couple of weeks as uh, some of you, if you watch this, you know, I lost my mom back in January. And uh, I have another family member, very close family member to me who's been going through a rough time since Father's Day. Got sick, a bacterial infection, uh, finally getting that kind of on the road to recovery. They were supposed to come home this week and then ran into another glitch in uh, so now dealing with a whole nother situation, I'm 500 miles away. Not that I could do much anyway besides pray, which is what we do. But, um, and then you run into these other things. I've got a car. I got a 19 year old car that's having problems. I'm like, what are you griping about, Mark? Your 19 year old car with 295,000 miles on it. What do you expect? Uh, and I just kind of laugh when I think about that because I'm like, that old car doesn't owe me nothing. It's still a good car. But it's inconvenienced me a little bit. And I could argue, oh, the rough places are, are, are I got a few rough places. I don't know about you. Maybe you got a few rough places in your life. Certainly in our country right now, we're, we're experiencing rough places. You know, high gas prices, food, the whole nine yards, just the, um, the, the tension. It feels rough. Sometimes I feel like I'm, 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 uh, as my wife would say, four wheeling on, on a paved road. You shouldn't have to do that. But it happens. Uh, we all have rough places. I think about this scripture and I think about prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Uh, what, what does that mean for us to do this? I think John the Baptist was, he was preparing the way. I, it's, it's metaphoric language. Does it mean that everything's always going to be rosy? Did, did John make things rosy for God? I think about how John preached. Who warned you, you vipers and you snakes and Boy, there's an evangelistic strategy for you. Hey, you filthy sinner, no good dirt bag dog. Turn! Yeah, that always works well, by the way. Um, John was uh, an interesting character, to say the least. 
maybe that's why he could make the straight places or the the crooked places smooth, the, the ways straight, and the roads the crooked roads straight, because he had the personality to just come in and say, "Here's how we do it." I think, think the the imagery here is that he's showing us, "Here's how you do it." Jesus said, "Take my yoke upon you, for my way is easy." It doesn't always seem easy, does it? But the the idea of a yoke is to be connected to him, that we don't have to pull on our own. That with Jesus, he does most of the pulling. Many times, uh, you know, I think about my grandfather would tell me about when he'd farm with a team of horses, when he would turn, the inside horse, when they made the turn, would just mark time. He didn't really walk. He didn't pull. He just kind of marched in place until the other horse turned. Then they got to the end of the row, and then the other horse marked time. It didn't really do much, and, and sometimes that's what it is with Jesus. We're not doing a lot of the pulling. We're just kind of along for the trip. You're going to have some rough places uh, along life. That's just life. In this world, you'll have trouble. Be good cheer, Jesus said. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I have often said many times, told my congregation, told many people, the things that I have to go through... Um, I would rather go through them with Jesus than without Jesus. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning. It just seems people are so so excited about, oh, those bad things happening. These are the end times. These are the end times. Jesus is coming soon. And you rapture people are just excited about getting out of here before it gets bad. And, and that's great. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I'm not, I don't see where it says that in scripture. But what I do see is that there are people seem to be more concerned about getting out of here and Jesus coming and straightening things out. And I certainly want him to do that because he's the only one that can do it. But I also know that there's a lot of people I know that don't know Christ. And as much as I want Jesus to come and straighten out this mess that we're in, I also want him to straighten out a bunch of messed up lives before that happens. And so these rough places... Um, in this world you'll have trouble and um, you know you go you, you maybe that doctor's report you know the doctor comes in I need to see you I need you to come back in we need to talk about something those are not things we like to hear we don't like to hear of loved ones dying we I just heard of an 18 year old that was shot and killed here in in the area where I live we don't like to hear that um, rough places smooth um, those rough roads that we find ourselves going down we need to know that we need to know today that, that God is going to make those rough places smooth he will help us through it is, is what I'm trying to tell you and um, there's an old Irish uh saying says keep walk if you're going through hell keep walking you might get through before the devil knows you're there i'm gonna encourage you today folks we just got to keep walking we got to keep walking by faith and uh putting our hand in jesus said jesus i don't understand this i don't know what to do but i'm gonna trust you and i'm gonna go with you today we're to walk in the spirit we're to keep in step with the spirit we are to live by the spirit according to galatians chapter 5 and so i'm gonna encourage you to do that today Lean into the lean into the the Trinity, to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and uh, dance with them today. That's what the the, the uh, early scholars used to refer to it as perichoresis, to dance with the Spirit or the the Trinity rather, and uh, let the Lord make your rough places smooth, and take His yoke upon you, for His way is easy. And he will walk with you. He will show you what to do. And you're going to get through and say, wow, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was. Or maybe it will be, but you're like, it could have been worse if I didn't have Jesus. So I'm going to leave it right there, wind chasers. I hope you're encouraged today. Um, keep chasing the wind because the wind is indeed chasing you. Until next time, I'm Pastor Mark. Grace and peace.